Ephesians 5, 8 through 20. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We are looking at um, live a life that is a life of light, as children of light. That's what Paul is uh, exhorting the Christians in Ephesus. So, as we live in this world, we can see a lot of things that we don't really like to see. And that's a natural thing to happen. There will be always something that we don't like to see. It is not going to change. But um, when Paul was talking and writing this letter to the church, the society at that time in Ephesus was, and also around the world, was in a dark situation spiritually, with a lot of um, unhealthy practices spiritually and socially going on. So Paul looked at it as a dark moment or dark time in, in, their, in their history that they need to wake up and be the light of this world as Christians. As we looked at the chapter earlier, Paul started the chapter by saying that the goal of a Christian life is to, is to imitate God. He talked about that a couple of Sundays ago. To follow and imitate God and um, live as um, Jesus lived. And we talked about it, you know, we would always uh, talk about what would Jesus do when we come to certain decisions. So follow Jesus in whatever way possible because we are Christians who follow him. Here Paul is saying that you also walk in the, walk as children of light. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And if we are followers of Jesus, we ought to be children of light or reflecting the light of Jesus in our lives. We all know that um, when we were children, many of us or most of us are, were afraid of darkness. I was afraid of darkness and may, most of us probably can relate to that. And our little children now, our grandchildren, they are afraid of darkness. And um, particularly, uh, they want to keep the lights on, on the hallways and maybe a little dark um, night lamp in their room so that he can, some kind of a light in their rooms can make them comfortable. And um, as adults also, we don't really write, like pitch darkness. How, how, how long can you survive a pitch dark moment? It is very hard. Um, so we like to be in the light. Uh, even if it is darkness, at least some kind of a ray of light brings some kind of a hope and, uh, and, and, and some kind of courage in us. It is because light and life are closely connected. And when I looked at it and, and thought about it and read more about the light, uh, if you read the Bible, the first thing in the Bible that the words that came out of, the, out of God's mouth in Genesis is what? Let there be light. That's the first words that came out of God's mouth as written in the Bible. So before anything that happened, Light came out and it was spoken by God because God himself is the source of light. So when we read also that he separated the darkness from the light 
uh, during that creation. So there is an intimate connection between creation and uh, light. And also we have an intimation creation, uh, intimate connection between light and life itself. Everything starts with light, if you think about it. Because um, the creation around us, the plants, how do they survive? They cannot survive without having sunlight, because they make their food by absorbing the sunlight. And what do we call it? They, uh, they absorb the nutrients from the soil and water, and the leaves uh, do photo photosynthesis. That's what it's called, because it's something they create out of light. Photo means light. So creation of something with uh, light. That's what photosynthesis means. So even the very existence of life in this world depends on light. Um, whatever chemical processes that they go through, we don't know what's happening there, but at the same time we know that without light there would not be life in this world. It is the same way as spiritual life. Light is just as necessary in our spiritual life as, as it is in our physical life. In the spiritual life, we look around, it's a lot of darkness that we can see around us. Just as Paul was looking at his time, at that time, we can relate to that during our society's situation in this time. Because we see a lot of things that are the things of evil and darkness. Because God is light, anything that is against God is compared to darkness in the scripture. So when we call about spiritual darkness, that means it is some, anything that is against the will of God is darkness that we can relate to as referred to in the scripture. Um, so as people of God in this time of uh, darkness, we need to be the light of this world reflecting the light of Jesus Christ, the light of hope and glory that God has provided to this world. Um, Many times the light that shines in this world can be obscured and, and um, stopped by the evil that is happening around us. Uh, the darkness of this time that I don't have to tell you that people are worried. We are worried about our future. We are worried about the future of our generation. We are worried about our culture and our social and moral standards of our society as it is coming to now. We are all worried about a lot of things. We are worried about economy. We are worried about peace in this world. A lot of things are worrying us on a daily basis that go against the will of God as we look at it. So we can compare this same way as Paul compared it when he did as a spiritual darkness looming in this time also. So the darkness of the present is obvious to everyone. It's a reality. But what do we do? We cannot just blame here, sit here and blame each other for that. We can only do blaming. But as Christians, we have a responsibility to step up and bring brightness in the dark times of our history. And that's what we are here for. That is why God gave us a life in this world at this particular time to live in this particular place. Because God has a purpose for us to be the light of this world as long as we have life in this world. So when we hear the word light, we are reminded of the darkness around us. It is because light is very significant and important when there is darkness looming around us. So we, as Christians, during this Lent season, the scripture, through the scripture, Paul is reminding and exhorting us that we ought to become shining lights in the midst of desperateness and darkness that is looming in this world. The Bible also talks about darkness in the past. As I said, even from the creation, before the creation, there was darkness. And God said, let there be light. And he brought forth light. And the first book of the uh, Bible, the first chapter in Genesis, is full of references of light. When I looked at it, it is there are about seven times light is mentioned in the first chapter uh, of Genesis. That means how it, it is important to be light in this world. When God said that let there be light, that means not only light came into this world, but also light came into the creation itself. That's why God created um, man in his own image. And he gave him the opportunity to be with him and live together in the presence of God. Because we were all light. I mean, Adam 
when he was created was part of the light but then sin came sin came and made us dark so we were separated from the light of god and we became dark in sin that's what happened the human generations so when god separated light from darkness god also separated the evil from the good that's what happens so whenever we find ourselves in evil situations god can separate the evil and win victory over the evil and bring uh, dark um, light into our dark situations and also darkness also we refer many times to our dark moments in our lives when we go through difficult times pain grief and sorrow sickness and things that go beyond our control when we find ourselves no where to turn to we'll find ourselves in dark times that is where the light of god will come and illumine our paths so that we can follow god's paths in our lives because he is the light the bible says he gave us the scripture to be the light and lamp to our path and light to our our ways so let us follow the scripture and follow jesus ways as the light bearers of this world and also just as god created light when earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep that's what we read there and order began to happen in this world during creation time when we find ourselves without order we don't know how to set things straight it is because there is darkness we can bring god into our lives he can set everything straight and also the darkness of our future many times we are afraid and worried about our future like i said before a lot of people are worried about their careers and their future because of the economy but uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and uh, my one of my friends used to say that even at that time what happens if somebody turns off the light at the end of the tunnel some people going through go through that situation as well but at, even in the midst of those difficult times and dark moments god says i am the light of the world don't be afraid be encouraged because you can brighten any dark situations and dark moments in your life because of jesus christ so the darkness of our lives um, can be brightened by the saving power of jesus christ and bring righteousness and wash us white as snow so that we can be bright uh, with righteousness of god and be presentable to god and also the final darkness that we all talk about and david talks about in psalm 23 is the dark valley of death he says though i walk through the valley of shadow of death i will fear no evil we all have to walk through that darkness one time or other there is no one immune to it nobody is immune or exempt from death so there is a dark valley that we all have to go through in this world at the end of our lives but do not be afraid because jesus has gone through that valley already and he has brightened that valley and we don't have to be afraid and the promise is that he is going to be with us in the dark valley of death so we don't have to be afraid about darkness of death because there is a resurrection coming and the glory of resurrection will enlighten our path as we go through the valley of death even in that valley of darkness god will brighten our pathway so that there will be a hope beyond our life so be encouraged and not be afraid of the darkness looming around us because the evil will never win the light will conquer darkness that's what the bible says the light will conquer darkness and the darkness will never conquer light even in the midst of a pitch dark room if you light up a little candle it conquers that darkness that is what light does so as people of god be the light of this world as we see a lot of things that are darkness around us don't be discouraged be encouraged by the fact that jesus has brightened this world because he came to this world took victory over death and evil so that we can be victors over death and evil and we can bring light to the dark moments not only in our lives but in the lives of others may the good lord bless us with these words as we go from this place